Thanks, John. So we now just want to have a brief, um, brief look um, at good and evil, or good versus evil. And this ties in um, quite a lot with what we just considered a few minutes ago, um, with life, um, life and death, and we'll um, cover a bit of the same ground, um, but in just a slightly different aspect. Um, so, firstly, um, firstly, if you could just come to the first um, letter of John, and chapter 3. Because before we really have a look at um, good versus evil, we need to consider um, really what is evil. Um, and in the Bible, um, as we as we saw um, saw earlier, good is um, following um, God's commandments and trying to obey Him, whereas evil is doing the opposite. And it's um, breaking God's laws and sinning against Him. And in one John chapter three and verse four, we have um, quite a succinct, succinct um, definition of uh, what sin is. Verse 4, we read, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So, and transgression, um, if you transgress something, you break something, um, is the best way, probably the best way for me to put it. Um, so sin is the breaking of God's law. Um, so when we sin, we, when we break God's laws, um, we sin um, against him. And it's important to, um, to consider that, uh, or to see, that God does not um, tempt um, man. There is no supernatural being who um, tempts us to do wrong and to sin against God. Um, so if we just go back to James's um, letter, um, so James chapter 1, which in these Bibles is on page 1111. Um, James chapter 1, verse 13. We, we let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it finished, bringeth forth death. So we saw earlier that um, how that by sinning, we then, because we sin, we then die. Um, this passage here gives us a bit more detail of how, of how we sin, um, how uh, we have the temptation to sin. It's not God who, who tempts us to do, um, do wrong. There's no supernatural being. Um, as we saw last week, there's no Satan or devil who tempts us to do something um, against God. But rather, we are tempted of our own lusts. And lust is, um, is, is wanting um, something else. And we won't turn back there. But in 1 John um, and uh, chapter 2, um, we read, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And so, and lust is, um, is wanting um, something else. If you lust after something, you want it. And so, here we're told that there's three aspects um, of this. So there's lust of the flesh, so wanting something for um, your own physical needs. The lust of the eyes, something which... Um, which looks good, um, and the pride of life, and just trying to uh, build up your own um, your own pride. Um, so there's these three aspects of um, of lust, um, and and as a consequence of sin. And if you just come back to Genesis chapter three, um, where we were um, earlier this evening, because um, back in Genesis chapter three we have quite um, quite a nice example. Um, so in Genesis chapter three we have the first um, first sin we call in the Bible, the first um, the first sin altogether. And in Genesis chapter three, um, we see that these three aspects of sin, these three aspects of lust, all come across in this particular um, these particular events. So Genesis chapter three and verse six, and we read it earlier. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took off the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave water unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So we're told that um, she, um, she saw that it was, was good for food, and that, that's the lust of the flesh. It was something which was going to, going to help her physical, uh, physical strength. She saw that it was pleasant to the eyes. It was something which, which looked good, and that links back to um, the lust of the eyes that we saw in um, 1 John chapter 2. And the other thing she saw was that um, 
was that it was a tree to be desired to make one wise. Um, and the serpent in verse um, verse 5, um, verse 5 said, For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, when he's talking to the woman, that your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So it was about being wise, it was um, being pride, um, it, was, it was playing on the, the pride um, of the woman, um, in that she wanted to be as gods, um, she wanted to be, um, be like God, it was the pride of life which was having a play here. And so here you've got these, these three aspects, um, as, uh, as 1 John 2 told us, of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So, so that's how, um, how lust, um, how sin, how evil um, comes about. And if we have, um, just have a, have a look in Jeremiah um, chapter 17. Um, in fact, we just look at two verses um, that both be on the screen. Um, but Jeremiah chapter 17 says that the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked, who can know it? So we're told that man is inherently evil. And often, um, often we might uh, might get told that man is man is inherently good, and uh, good will prevail over evil. But if we actually think about the world um, around us, the world we live in, we see that when man is left to his own his own devices, um, that there's there's often evil, whether it's um, moral decline or, um, or, or or we might just say small things, or even greater stuff such as terrorism and. Uh, and other things such as like that. Man is in heavenly evil. And in Mark chapter 7 um, and verse, um, verse 20, again, um, Jesus says um, a very similar thing. And there we, um, he says, That which cometh out of the man defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. So the Lord Jesus lists um, items which, um, which comes from within the man, and it's all these evil aspects, um, it, these evil aspects of man. And this evil um, all, um, all came about the, um, the re um, from, from the Garden of Eden, from the events we saw in Genesis chapter 3, where since then, man has man has been inherently evil and has um, naturally tended to sin against God rather than um, striving to follow God's laws. But as we saw with life versus death, um, again, this is not that's not the complete end. That's not the end of the uh, of the picture. So come to Romans and chapter eight, um, and we see that we saw earlier that God created. Um, created the earth, and in Revelation we saw that God created it for a purpose. And in Romans chapter 8, and verse, um, verse, well, verse, we're on the screen you see verses 18 to 21, and um, if we just have a look at, particularly verse 20, for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So um, the creature, mankind, who is in heaven evil, will be delivered from the bondage of corruption um, and into the glorious liberty of the children of God, it says. And so that's telling us that um, the creation of God will be transformed again um, so that it is what God intended um, in the beginning. It is, um, as, as God intended, um, striving to follow God, um, serving God, rather than being um, inherently evil and wanting to um, naturally sin against God. And then if we have a look at um, Revelation chapter 21, so again, the end of your Bibles, um, we see here how, how this, is going, um, this is going to happen. And how the relationship between God and man will be restored um, to the way that God intended it, rather than uh, man sinning, sinning against God. So Revelation chapter 21 um, and verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death 
neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And so that relationship which was broken in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned against God will be restored. And God will again um, dwell with man. And um, as John mentioned a few minutes ago, um, the book of Revelation details um, or gives images of the kingdom of God. Um, that kingdom which will be um, established upon this earth when um, the Lord Jesus Christ returns. And this is one of those visions. Um, this is telling us that when Jesus does return, when God's kingdom is established, that then that relationship between God and man will be restored um, back to what it was meant to be. So that's um, a brief look at good versus evil, and I'll hand back to John for the conclusion. Thank you, Peter. So we come now to a brief finale, and we're just going to really cover things that we mentioned before, uh, the tips that we've tried to uh, highlight to you, to always prepare and, and plan when you want to uh, read your Bible daily, to focus on what you know, so that you can build on those things and, and then venture into things that you're not quite sure, sure of. Reminder of those echoes that, that often come through when we're reading God's Word. Things in the Old Testament will reappear in the New Testament. Because as we know, all of these things were inspired by, by the Lord God to those men and, and women that wrote the books that we have. Note down any questions that, that you come across, anything you are unsure of as you read the Bible so that you can either look further into that, look at the concordances and atlases, etc., or perhaps uh, speak to someone who might be able to help. So never get flustered, uh, be patient, use other translations, perhaps more modern languages might make things a little bit easier to un understand. The study tools we've just mentioned, the, the concordances, uh, the lexicons, the, the atlases that can assist if there is still uncertainty or doubts or a lack of knowledge in certain areas, which is completely understandable. Then <clears throat> find someone, um, any of the presenters really can help that, that, you, that you've seen during these 10 weeks. But always understand the context for God's writings and messages to us in the historical setting. Because all of the answers, everything is revealed in God's Word. But by, above all, really try and stay positive, not get daunted by, by things that you're not sure of. <clears throat>